Are you recording yet, KJ, or no? Yeah, you're good, buddy. Okay. Uh, what's going on, everyone? This is uh, Dan Jeffrey. Uh, I'm not going to share the camera just because I think it actually streams better as long as we're just showing the, the chart, not any actual faces. So uh, I appreciate everyone coming out. I know it's Mother's Day, so, you know, it's late in the evening. But as always, this is something that we like to do. So um, one of the things that I was going over this past week with one of the, the premium members with the his trade reviews was this concept of just kind of understanding how a move starts will help you determine what to kind of anticipate next. And for those who understand the way I trade, I do not use prints. So this is strictly how can you use the understanding of formation of bars to your advantage? Because even if you do use prints and you sit there and you start to ask yourself, you know, how much more does this move have? Can I, should I be taking profits? During your trading, you should not be asking yourself those questions. If you are asking yourself those sort of questions, then you're essentially dealing with uncertainty. And you can easily remove the uncertainty in your trading by making sure that you have your rules, but also you can look at specific things such as how a move started or look for maybe continuation bars, which are you know big strong bars. I'll show you here in a, in a little bit. But that's kind of one of the, the biggest critical pieces that you guys need to understand about your trading is your results are entirely depicted on how well you follow your own rules because it doesn't matter if we're trading stocks or if we're trading cryptos or if you're trading forex you are bringing who you are to that market and until you change who you are internally and the way that you think and the way that you function your results will always be the same so don't ever be sitting there blaming the market for your poor performance. Your poor performance has everything to do about the person that you see in the mirror. And if you can't swallow that pill, then short-term trading, day trading is not for you. And you need to be honest with yourself. I don't sugarcoat things. So if that offended somebody, I'm, I'm not sorry. I'm telling you exactly what I wish someone kind of told me straight up when I got into this because... The biggest thing that held me back from my trading success was how willing I was or wasn't to let go of that person who I am that was coming to the market. So it's a little bit of a psychology, but at the same time, I'm going to show you how in the chart, this is the point that I'm making. So when you're bringing yourself to the to this trade and say you're trading Apple and you know, you're seeing that we have a little bit of a gap up because technically we opened up here and then you see this giant red bar just shooting down to the downside, right? And you're, th you're thinking of taking this thing short. Well, first off, there is a such thing as too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Not only are, you, are we gapping up, which is typically a bullish sign, but we're also above a 20 and above the 200 which is everything of how I base support my morning upon the strategy that I'm going to utilize. So when you have this big too much of a good thing, I'm not going to anticipate that this is just going to flush down completely only because my rules says so. But if I had no rules, I would sit here and I would see this giant bar forming and I'd be like, oh my goodness, yes, I'm going to be shorting this thing. We're going to go back below the 200 because we're just going to go completely through. And then it doesn't because the 20 holds that support before we rip higher. But it would be my emotions that would sit here and, and bother with me because I would sit here and be like, well, how is it that a giant red bar has no follow through? Because, you know, Dan says that you got to trust big bars. Well, let me put this into perspective real quickly. See this red bar right here? That's a pretty good size green or red bar. How many of these can you fit in this? One, two, almost three. This one big bar eliminated way too much of a good thing. Therefore, if I were to take this short, 
I'm anticipating some bounce off the two off the 20 here, and then we're gonna get our move higher. Now the reason why I say look at how a move starts will help you know how much more it can actually go, because there's two significant bars from here to right about here that tells me that this move up to make a new high on the day was granted. So when I say watch how a move starts and let your rules do the rest for you, this is exactly what I mean. First and foremost, we have a move down, we get a move up, we get a move back down. You can look at it as a A, B, C correction with you guys who use Elliott Wave. Now, we fill the gap, look for the gap close reversal off the 20, we're making a move higher. Now, this was the first telltale sign that we had some strength. This right here, this green bar right near the 20, after we make a move up and we get a move down, now we're having a change of trend. So regardless of what the printer is saying at this point, you could look at this as basic structure. We had a high, low, lower high, lower low, but now we're making a higher low. So first off, you're looking bullish. Secondly, this bar right there, powerful. So this warrants you, warranted you a nice push right off of this level to get higher. What is your first potential area? Here. Now, rule base would have told me that this is where I'm going to be looking for a potential resistance. And then my next rule is going to be, all right, let me look at this pullback to see the behavior of the pullback and realize if this pullback is going to be viable for a new high or not. And better yet, let me look back at how this move started. Not only do you have a very strong green bar that kind of eliminated or initiated this entire move, at the same time, you have a rather strong push to the upside just like this. Now, for those who know what is the percentage that I always use for any sort of big move, which the move technically started here. So if we make a giant move like this, here's your high, here's your low. What am I looking for? A 50% hold, which is ironically the same area as this prior pivot on the ABC correction. We're pulling right back into it. And then what happens? You get another ridiculously strong green bar right here, taking out nearly four prior reds. This was my next indicator to tell me that this thing is going to rip to make a new highs. Because not only is it staying above a 50% retracement, at the same time, it is, it is starting with a very strong bar. I don't know about you, but how many of you could actually sit here and had you taken a, a buy here and you make this move up, would you actually be able to stand this entire pullback to then just let this little one green bar do all the thinking for you? Because I'm betting if you're not experienced, all of you would have been wiped out of the trade. And then you would have looked at it and see that it had gone higher or maybe you got eliminated because you were nervous of some little selling taking place here, forgetting to look back at how this move started to keep you in the trade. If you can't eliminate your own ideas and only sit there and look at what the stock is doing for you, you will not succeed. And there are some of us in here that do this full time and some of us in here that are looking to transition and do this full time. Until you change the way you think and the way you process these stocks, your results will continue to struggle and you cannot blame the market. You can only blame yourself. So you need to make sure that you guys are taking these lessons every single week, the YouTube lessons, the live lessons, anything that we're providing, and you are just finding the ones that when you hear it, you're like, dang, you know what? That's actually a really good thing. And you need to start implementing that to your trading. Something else that you could easily do in this sort of scenario here is if you're entering in the trade here and you're taking some profits up here and you still have some, some shares in your position, you can utilize a break even stop. And look at this, your break even stop was never even violated. So even if this thing came all the way down here, you're still walking away profitable because you took profits. And Till you finally break through, then you're first off going to take your stop at break even. You're still walking away profitable. But had you just held your break even stop in the first place, 
you then could catch the rest of the move higher. So use these to your advantage. So that being said, hope that helps some of you. Um, at this point, I'm going to, actually, if there's any questions about any of this stuff, please throw it into the day trade channel. I'll be browsing over there while doing my overall market analysis. But like I said, hope that, hope that little piece helps. But seriously, guys, if you're not trading based on any sort of rules and you're only basing it off of emotional reactions, make sure every action you do, you ask yourself, is this emotion based? Am I reacting? Or is this rule based? Hold yourself accountable. We can't do it for you. We can help you, but in the moment, you can only do it to yourself. So, that being said, if there's anything from there, you know, write it down as something you want to work on this week or the next couple of weeks and just keep working at it. Um, I'm going to rotate over into a just overall market analysis at this point. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, please throw it into the day trade channel while I'm doing this. Um, obviously, market futures right now are up 0.27%, which is pretty good. Uh, that means that on the SPY, probably going to open up a dollar or two per usual. I swear, if you just kept buying the SPY for the last couple of weeks, you'd be up a lot. Um, that being said, if you look at this little area, we had a consolidation, but keep it simple. Here's your low, your low held. Buyers off the 20, we're running higher. So things are looking pretty good. Don't forget though, there are still earnings coming out. So that could take some sort of play into what the market does. But the most fascinating thing that, that happened to the market was on Friday. It was perhaps one of the worst job reports or unemployment rate reports in quite some time. Yet clearly the market didn't care. So this is why I say uh, don't really trade the news because clearly when there's bad news, people are still buying this market. If, if anything, that should sort of warn you or, ha or cause some caution because if people are just keep blindly buying when there are signs there that just, you know, this economic recovery post pandemic isn't actually going as well as what people thought. Uh, I would say the market is potentially getting pretty greedy. So Usually when the whole market is getting rather greedy, we are at risk of just unexplained selling, but it's really just profit taking when people realize that it's a pretty greedy or people like to use this word frothy, a uh, frothy market condition and people might sell it off. So first and foremost, looking at it this week, you know, we're breaking out this consolidation. So I would say just keep your eyes looking for the upside. Always take into account some potential selling along the way, but looking at this from a basic structure point, we just still continue to have higher highs. So, I mean, this is sort of an equal high, but it's still technically higher. So until we have a low that breaks through one of the highs and comes up and makes a lower low, then the trend changes. But until then, don't fight it. Just keep flowing down the river, which this river keeps just, market condition keeps going up. So, that's on the S&P 500. I mean, even if we look at the, the weekly chart, which is a bigger time frame, I mean, it's just green, 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 green. You know, within the next week or two, probability states that there will be a red week, whether it's this week or not. I'm not going to say it is. However, you know, based on just what we're doing, we remain cautious. You know, the day trades will still be there in front of you. If you can't spot a day trade every 10, 15, 20 minutes, you're still developing, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I, more experienced traders can do that. And that's eventually what you want to be able to get to. That's why I watch about 10 stocks at once because I can pretty much spot an opportunity almost every 10 minutes if I really wanted one. So for the swing trades, um, one of them is actually gold related. So if we look at gold, gold is looking very good for a, just say a macro long-term run I mean, if we look at this from where this move started and we draw a simple fib and you look at where we're bouncing from. So let's just say the move started up there. You know, we're bouncing literally right off the 382. You all know my rules. If something stays above the 50%, look for continuation higher. Well, I'm pretty sure based on this analysis, gold is just looking good. So those GDX calls, there's a reason why I said we're holding these things for weeks because 
based on this and the weeks to come, we're looking to break new all-time highs and keep running. So keep gold in your back pocket. Make sure you guys want to just have some exposure. You can do shorter term trades on GDX or you just ride out these longer calls. Uh, the other market that we obviously we always look at would be the Bitcoin market. Um, cryptos are, are doing well. I mean, it's very clear the altcoin cycle is is just coming in full full force like it was back in 2017, 2018. We have Litecoin right now retesting all time highs, better yet, making new all time highs. We're at three ninety seven, almost four hundred dollars. The prior high here, need to eliminate the fibs. Uh, prior high on Coinbase was right around three ninety seven, four hundred. So, you know, what's the what's the typical thing that we see here? We see Litecoin running. We got other mini altcoins making new all time highs. That's altcoin season. So, what that means is. Bitcoin's dominance on the market is probably on the rather low side. We could actually look at that real quick. So Bitcoin's dominance is at 45%. That means how much money is in the altcoins compared to Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin was used to be at about 74% of the entire market right here in December 28th of 2020. If we looked at where Bitcoin was at that price, you would imagine it's rather high. But since then, Bitcoin's dominance has been fading. That confirms the money is rotating out of Bitcoin into the old coins, yet Bitcoin is still maintaining a $58,000 price point. What does that tell you? That tells you that people aren't necessarily selling Bitcoin. There's just more money that is rotating into the altcoin at the same time there is still people that are holding their bitcoin and not selling it there was a there was a metric i forgot to pull up the article that showed it but coinbase is literally running out of bitcoin to sell to people because people are just buying up their bitcoin and then throwing it into cold storage wallets this will continue to cause a supply shock and i believe a lot of the cryptos will be experiencing that not just bitcoin other people are going to be accumulating cryptos and they're just not going to sell it. They're going to remove it off the exchanges and they're going to throw it into cold storage wallets and just hold it for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Think of that on a grand scheme of things. If a supply shock happens, meaning just the amount of supply that the exchanges has to offer to buy and sell crypto, if there isn't much there, it is only going to drive demand up. So when you're looking at what the overall market is doing, which is still going up, you got to just entertain the idea that there's a lot more people who are just looking to accumulate. So by all means, take profits. If you have profits on some of these altcoins, one of them running again today is Cardano, right? Cardano is making new all-time highs, just breaking through at a consolidation. You know, it's probably running up to that three to five dollar range that it potentially could get to. I mean, its prior high was back here only at a dollar. We're only at a dollar seventy seven. You know, Bitcoin did a three X over its all time high. Ethereum did almost a three point five four X over its all time high. So Cardano still got some room to run here. Point being, if all these altcoins are running crazy, I'm still going to say that although there is a supply shock taking place on Bitcoin, this means that the Bitcoin run is slowly getting towards the end. Uh, in terms of, I mean, if you just want my personal opinion on Neo, I'll, I'll do it right now. But usually Lorenzo will go through all those charts, but I'll do that real quick after all this. So if you guys are exposed to the crypto market, just understand Bitcoin's going to probably try to pump a little bit higher. But same thing, if we do a little trend, trend analysis and we do this and we do this and we can't break back above the highs, then we know it's going to go down. I said it last week, during these correction phases is when all coins were all just blasting off. So I believe the next month or two is going to be wild for a lot of the all coins that haven't ran yet. But for the ones that already has, probably going to experience some selling because money's just going to keep rotating. So stand your toes when it comes to the, the crypto market. If you want to take profits, take profits. If you just want to hold it for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 
make sure it's a good project, do your due diligence, make sure you check out the white papers, which you can access that look just looking at coin market cap, something like this. So if you go to coin market cap, you go to say Cardano, white paper, literally click that link, you can understand about the project, or just click on the the website link and you can look at what they do. Super simple analysis, but keeping it simple. Um, so Act just really quickly wants to look at NIO. What do I see in NIO? Well, looking like it's still weak. That's we're just having this consolidation right here. If we break through this level, see ya, it's gone. It's gonna break down. That's on the weekly chart. On the daily chart, what is it looking like? Well, we're holding right above the 200. So once again, if it breaks through 35, I'd be extremely, extremely cautious. If it breaks through 35, what's the most first first potential target to run to? Probably right here. This little band of price action right down at 29. If not, right down here at 22. Below that, you have all this congestion at down to 19. That's all providing it breaks down here. Keep your, keep your analysis simple. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Just look at simple support resistance zones. Here's this prior support that we're now just sort of consolidating near, but basic trend, your lows or your highs are getting lower, but your lows are sort of basing out. So all this is, get a little sloppy, but all this really is, is just this little triangle thing. It's coiling. Once it coils, it's gonna break up or it's gonna break down. Be patient with it. You gotta remember too, there is uh, some Escalating tension with China going on. Neo is obviously part of China. Be careful of that. But that is it for me since Lorenzo, you usually do the, the individual ticker charts, but I figured I'd just cover it for you real quickly. So that being said, uh, if anyone has any questions, by all means, put it in the Daytree channel, as I've already said. Hopefully you guys learned something from my little piece. Lorenzo, it's on to you. What's up, guys? Dan, good content as always. Um, yeah, I hope you guys like really just listen and take hold of what he says for those psych lessons, just because like they matter so much. Um, let me share this week's earnings real quick. Let me pull it up. All right, in the day trade channel, I uploaded a picture of uh, earnings this week. We have a good bit, and, like, I love playing earnings. The day after, you get such volatile moves, and you know they're going to have volume, and I think it's, like, one of my favorite things to trade now since we've been doing this, but I've been having pretty good days with them, so I'm just going to keep with it. But Workhorse, uh, Roblox, they'll be good, Marriott. Tuesday got PLTR, JMIA, uh, Fubo, Lemonade, Sonos. I mean, you guys can read, but I mean, there's some pretty good names that like vol stocks that can be volatile, right? Uh, BLNK, Airbnb, Disney, uh, Baba is on Thursday. I mean, there's tons. So I see potential for each morning. We should have potential to trade something pretty good like tomorrow morning. Definitely gonna be watching Marriott. Definitely gonna be watching Workhorse. Keep it pretty simple. Um, let me share my screen real quick. <clears throat> I really don't have a lesson. Um, maybe I'll make a lesson like during the week or something that we can go over. But as of right now, it's kind of drawing a blank, and I'd rather just figure something during the week, and you know provide a more quality lesson so uh kj asked about a few tickers he asked about um american airlines i'm liking most airlines this week some look kind of sketchy but i'll go over uh, american airlines looks pretty solid i mean as you can see you got support riding this trend line for a while now uh i like it over like 22 25 that just confirms that breakout for me because Technically didn't break out yet, but it's pretty darn close. So we'll see what we get. Um, he has about CGC, which is Canopy Canopy Growth Company. I see this falling wedge. 
I mean, it might break out over twenty seven fifty, but um, I don't know. I, I've seen all these patterns where you have these giant run ups. I think it's just gonna chop for a while. I'd be shocked unless you know the whole uh, marijuana sector gets some news. I'd be surprised. Very likewise for Tilray. Um, basically the same thing, right? Like same exact looking chart. Unless we get some crazy news or something, uh, I don't know if it's really going to take off. Um, he asked about Penn. Penn doesn't look bad just because, you know, you got the Barstool name. It, tech, it typically rallies well. You're coming into two support zones. One, it already bounced off of like 80-25. There's another large support potentially at the 76 level. This falling wedge is kind of scattered, but... If you get a clean, strong close above 90, uh, you could definitely get pushed to the upside. Uh, MRJJ31 asked about NNDM. This is pretty solid. I mean, you had this falling wedge breakout. Now it's falling wedge into the same support zone again. Will it break out? I'd like it to see a close over 7 on the daily. Uh, to get pushed back towards 9. But we'll see what we get. Um, I know Ench, Nolan Sherm, maybe. I think he asked about Fubo, and I'm just not going to go over that because they have earnings this week, so I feel like it's kind of irrelevant to give my opinion on it two days before they have earnings. So, um, As far as the ones I have, I got CCL. Um, I think Colin brought this up last week, but – it held this support and it looks pretty good right now. Um, that's a very nice bullish indicator that you know you got the color takeoff, color takeout right off the uh, support area. So I'd expect to see a pushback to twenty eight, possibly the twenty nine level of the resistance area this week. Um, UAL was the other airline I like a lot. As you can see, we're breaking out right now. This uh, consolidation symmetrical triangle. So I'm just looking for a continuation straight up. Um, it, it'd be ideal if, you know, tomorrow we have like an inside candle, which is like a pause where we don't make a new high, but we don't make a new low from this candle. I'd like to see that to just give us an opportunity to hop in a long play for that. Um, the other airline that looked good was Alaskan Airlines. I haven't looked at this name in a while, but very nice consolidation as well. Starting to flag. I'd take this over 68.50 areas, maybe even 69, but um, still a very clean chart. Hold on, someone tagging something. Uh, some tickers on the fly. Sure, I'm down. All right, Chewy. I was looking at Chewy. I saw this and just broke to the downside. So, um,. You might, you're probably, you're likely gonna see more red before you get any more green. And then the other one was CRSR. This looks boring as hell. <laughs> like that's some crazy sideways consolidation. I mean, you could do a, uh, you know, support and resistance here. But unless you get a clear break or something. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not buying that one. Um, back to the list though. Mu doesn't look half bad. <laughs> you got this choppy support zone. It's more of a zone. It's not really a level, but it's trying to break out. This is a relatively weak breakout, but sometimes they work. Like you might get pushed up this week, but not not ideal. But you never know. I mean. The whole sector of semiconductors, which is like they make, you know, computer chips and everything. Um, they've been getting beat up recently. MU and AMD. I mean, look at AMD's chart. That's kind of boring. So maybe they'll rally this week or something. Um, next up was Snapchat. Strong support here, at like the 51 area. Um, you got a big range here, but based on... You know, like this bounce at, at this uh, 51 level, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a relatively strong week for Snapchat and just continue the upside to like the 60 area. Yeah, that is not what mine looked like, but I see what you see. Just 
Yeah, the CRSR, sorry. But yeah, Snapchat doesn't look bad. I had two others, but I didn't realize that they had earnings this week, so I crossed them off my list because they're relevant to me now. Uh, up next, DraftKings. This is just really ugly. And I just wanted to share this because we, like, trade it quite frequently. This was a pretty nice falling wedge and it broke to the downside. If we get any pause, so well, I was talking about uh, UAL, how we had the breakout to the upside. I'd love to see a pause for a continue upwards. Opposite for DraftKings. If I see a pause candle where we have like a green candle but super small and it doesn't really do anything, I'm taking that short because this looks like it should come further down and find the larger support zone. Ideally, look, you want to create price targets? Look to the left. Dan says it all the time. Look to the left. Look at that. That's a strong area. That's a very strong area. Um, no doubt in my mind, DraftKings will come down to like 44 50. So I'd love for this to like open at 50 or something tomorrow, and I'll take puts on it because that to me is a fairly no brainer trade. Uh, up next is Baba. They have earnings this week, but I like this on the weekly, so I'll still share it. Very strong trend line, as you can see here. Pull back to consolidation. You can even do one of these guys. We'll just show the zone of support. Like, that's, that's relatively strong. I like it long term. I'm not saying play calls this week because they do have earnings, so. But I, I have some shares long term. Just an interesting spot to add, in my opinion. And then we got CRNC, which, again, Colin brought this up last week. Um, decent support here around, like, 89, 88 area. Uh, this is very clean descending triangle. But as you can see here, like, wick, weak candle, weak, like, all these weak candles. So I'm... I'm more so expecting to move to the downside just because, like, this is really weak. You got a really nice tail bar here on Friday, so I'd actually be looking for a play down. But, again, you should just be waiting for a clean breakout, and then you just take the breakout and let it ride, right? Um, i trying to think of some – like, that's all I have as far as charts go because – like I said, like I didn't have that many, and I don't think that many look good, but we can review some that worked out well, like Home Depot. Uh, this was a very clean, you know, bull flag breakout. Talked about that last week. Lowe's did the same exact thing. Um, I was kind of disappointed because I like this breakout on C, which is Citigroup, but I was on a car trip, so I had to exit that relatively early, but still... Decent profits, I'll take that any day. Um, but yeah, it's really just about being patient and taking the breakouts and then just managing it. Don't overcomplicate anything. If anyone else has any tickers, I mean, I really... I said before I hopped on, um, there's not much this week. Everything's in a weird standpoint. If you're big tech, like Apple and Microsoft, you've... Been on these like giant moves, and now you're kind of eh. Spy is you know pushing it up, but on what? Yeah, I, sh I could look at that STM. Oh, this trade's annoying. <laughs> like, this trade's annoying from the standpoint of you have gaps everywhere. So I'm I'm gonna pull this to two minutes just to see how it trades. Yeah, that doesn't look fun to trade at all. Ah. Uh, like, you could do TA on stocks like this, but it's easier just to find, you know, nice support and resistance zones. Um, I don't know. This stock is very choppy. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything about this stock because it's not very pretty. Um, close, sure. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, I was highlighting that need this nine level and eventually it got it, made its run up to 11, but now we're coming back and it's super choppy. So I, I would imagine this comes further down or just chop sideways. There's no reason for this to push to the upside given the chart. 
Um, my gas bill, IBM. I mean, he had a breakout over 137. I don't know, Mike, are you, are you seeing something I'm not seeing? But Maybe he'll creep up to this resistance zone on the weekly, which is like around 155, 154, but that's all I can really tell you. On the, on the daily, it doesn't really look that nice. It kind of trades like trash, in my opinion. Those are some weird candles for me, but... Um, you asked about NVIDIA. I looked at NVIDIA and I thought about doing this, but I'll, I'll just talk about it. This, kind of, call me crazy, like I see a cup and handle. Here's your cup, you know, you got... The formation of the cup. Here's your handle. If it breaks over like 600 with news, it could run to easily like 660 or something, right? So, uh, well, at least we good minds think alike. Uh, DJ, uh, D, is it D Jackson or DJ Axon? Um, but you asked about TA. What is this? Travel Centers of America? I didn't even know they had a stock. I'm vibing with this stock. That's pretty clean. I like that over 28 if it can get there. This thing trades no volume at all, but... I mean, as you can see, you got a pretty strong support area at like 24. So, yeah, if you break over 28, that could definitely give a run. D Jackson got it. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. Um, yeah, if anyone else has any others, I mean, feel free to share, but just be patient and wait for those breakouts. And I think this is a market right now where it's a hell of a lot easier to day trade, given the volatility each day, rather than trying to swing trade and time the market, so to speak. So I see Colin typing. tabs typing oh Colin these backhanded compliments NRG NRG Stadium that's where the Houston Texans play this is interesting like just because of these last two candles they're indecision for sure but like you got wicks down telling me there's no sellers there I can do one of these, right? Very tight falling wedge. Um, you got this giant gap to fill. That's kind of awkward. You could say this is like a support area just because of how often it's been trading here. So yeah, maybe if you get close over 35, you could definitely take that long. I, I see the potential. Yeah, this gap is... Pretty big for the price of the stock, but must have had bad earnings or something. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna put a thumbs down to this comment by by Colin. Um, yeah, if anyone else has anything else, feel feel free to just blow up the chat. I mean, I want to give you guys some good content. I like JD a lot right now. I think it's I'm talking long term. Um, it's just chilling. It's just vibing. But I'd like to see it, you know, push back up. I've been buying shares here and there for the last few weeks. I think it's over J and J. Thoughts on Dodge? I think Doge is. I always say Dodge. Uh, Doge, I think, is just. BS, but I mean, Dan, do you want to hop back on and give some opinions on Doge because your opinion would be more educated than mine? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. All right, so for in terms of like you guys worrying about Dogecoin, um, all right. 
first off, do the math and look at how high it's already ran since November. So I know I'm not sharing my screen, but I'm doing it in the background for you guys. And it's something yeah, I don't know. Hold on. You could just do it. I'll just stop presenting. I think what Dan's really getting at is the fact that Dogecoin's up 20,000% or whatever it is. Or how much? What percent is it up? All right. So, first off, <laughs> it's up 34,877% off the lows from November of 2020. Yeah. You guys want to buy it now? So if you're If you're buying it now, it's because you have this belief and this speculation that you believe all this talk that Doge is going to go to a dollar. Whether it goes to a dollar or not, I personally don't care. But we are not here to give you financial advice or anything on the matter. I Because you can't even be a licensed crypto investor, but... Um, I would not be touching Doge until we get a retest of this consolidation zone. Look at the price, eight to five cents. I've been telling people I will not touch it with a 10 foot pole until it's back below 10 cents. And then people look at me like I got 30,000 eyes. Like they cannot believe that I would say that because it ruins their whole million dollar dream. Sorry to tell you guys, you just, if you wanna make millions of dollars from crypto, Yes, it will happen, but not when you're buying Doge at 54 cents right now. If you were buying Doge down here, you would you could have made a couple million, but not if you're buying it up here. So realistically, what would I anticipate from, from Doge at this point? I'd be looking for people to start taking profits. However, I will give the respect where it's due that this community that is supporting Doge Will, may not be willing to sell everything that they have. However, all it takes is just a little bit of emotions to start kicking into the market and you're going to start seeing some aggressive selling like we always have. What happened in the past? Well, let's quickly look at it. Dage reminds me of CCIV because we're like everyone's hyping it. They're like... They got this car. They're going to merge with Lucid. And then the news comes out that they're merging with Lucid. And it fell off a cliff. I, I will tell you this right now, uh, D, D. Jackson. Will Doge hit a dollar? It eventually will, but not this year. And if it hits this year, I will admit I was wrong. I'll be impressed. But it, it's, just, it's hard for me to get behind that idea after seeing what happened back in 2017, 2018. When you start to see that everybody and their mother is talking about a crypto, especially the mother that probably has no idea what a crypto is. This yeah, my year, mother, actually, to be in particular. Uh, <laughs> and, and no disrespect to Lorenzo's mom. But if it's, if it's finally getting around to his mom as a, an idea, it's probably near its end of its run. What you guys have to start looking at is look at the the messages look at the stories that news media is spitting out when they start recommending things case in yeah, point so late to any anything case the in point look at bitcoin back here when it flushed down all this time they were like don't buy bitcoin bitcoin is is risky it just broke through its new low and forever it is it's just going to go to zero don't do it. Now here we are. 57,000, 58,000, 59,000. What are they doing? Buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a great investment. We got a lot of banks that are buying this up, blah, 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 blah. Save it. Because guess what? Back in 2017, guess when banks and everyone started recommending when people to buy Bitcoin? Right here at the top before it did the change of trend and crashed. So be careful to the narrative. You always need to take that into consideration. Uh, what did Shifty just say? Um, people think it'll be a currency, so much volume coins, something. You got to think it from the standpoint that if everyone is buying Doge right now, like Dogecoin, and, um, you know, like random people who have no idea what they're doing, you know, your local 
uh, kid from high school who was making rap and SoundCloud videos and has no idea what he's doing at all. He doesn't even have a job. And he's buying Dogecoin. It's probably going to fail soon. Like, <laughs> no... No stock or anything has rewarded people like that in the history of anything, right? Well, actually, that's wrong. People who bought Bitcoin early on have the highest percent returns than anything. It's just right now when people are seeing the quick gains that people get from crypto is yeah, all of a sudden. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. They want to buy in and it's late. So like in terms of your point, Shifty, where like, you know, Doge will grow and, you know, people realize it's not very practical. Here's the thing. If more people end up adopting Doge as a form of payment, as a form of transaction, then it sort of does have its place in the ecosystem of the finance world, as awful as that is to say, because it was created as a joke. But I can tell you that there are actually other good crypto projects that are looking to work with Doge because they see that people are using it. So... What I buy big, what I buy summary into in all of this is what I buy Doge right now. No, I would wait until it is back below 10 cents. For those that don't believe me, it will happen. And honestly, back under a penny would be even better. Can we buy yeah. puts on Doge is the better question. I think, we... on, I think on Kraken, you might be able to take shorts on Doge or maybe on Binance. I, that I, I'm not too sure. I don't have the Binance account. I would do it. I'd throw some money on that. But, like long term, I will now give Doge the benefit of the doubt and say that due to the people that are that have it or that are believing it and getting behind it, then sure. Next altcoin cycle, next time when, you know, pretty much this is what's gonna take place over the over the course of the next few years. Let me put it on the weekly chart to make it make more sense. So here's this massive run up. You best believe that over a year or so it's just gonna do this and do this. And do this, and then when it starts doing this, and it just starts going sideways, that's when you can accumulate. That's when you can buy. Because guess what I was doing during when Ethereum was doing that. I mean, this is on the weekly, so it's going to be a lot faster. But if I go back to the daily, and when it was going sideways, I was buying a lot of it. I bought a little bit down there, but I bought the majority of it right here when it was just consolidating, going sideways. That is when you buy your cryptos. But what took place before this? Well, you guys should already know. It paratered, crashed, died, had to get reset. Things happen. So that's my that's my outlook on Doge. Don't buy it now. If you bought it at 27 cents, that's a great level. Make sure you have a level that if it gets below, if it's up at 54 cents, you're taking your profits. Because I can, I don't like making guarantees, but guarantee you, it's going under where you bought it at. So whether you want to sit there and hold on to bags for a year and a half, maybe two years, however long it takes for Doge to finally correct, then by all means, go for it. But if you don't want to sit there and hold on for years, like people just did for the last two and a half years, and they're finally seeing their gains come back, no. So hopefully that helped. Give everybody's perspective on Doge, but also just the overall crypto market in general and how you want to approach it. Uh, Litecoin. Litecoin's retesting its all-time high. My price target will still remain anywhere from $800 to $1,000. If for providing, it repeats what it did in 2017, which it more than likely is going to because everything else seems to be on the same trend. Litecoin is easily 800 to 1,000. So you're looking at a 2x, almost 3x from where it's at right now, retesting 400. But now that it's testing its all-time high, look for a little bit of a pullback. You know, here we are, breaking through 413. Well, that's good. I'd like to see it on the surface. But a little bit apart from the 20, so might have a little bit of a run, but entertain a pullback and then go. But this right here, I mean, this is a weekly chart. Litecoin will do this. All cryptos end up doing this. It just goes vertical for weeks on end. Maybe Litecoin is doing that right now. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But just watch it. It'll happen. So 800 to 1,000 is what I'm predicting for Litecoin.
Is there anything else? XLM. Um, XLM hasn't even made a new all-time high, so XLM I, it needs to get back above 95 cents. Once it gets back above 95 cents, it's probably running to 2 to $3. All right. We're coming, we're almost near the all time high. We're getting close, but we haven't broke through yet. Once it does that, easily get above a dollar, you're gonna run to two to three dollars. Dan, SNX. Are you asking me that or is Rain asking me that? I'm asking. No, oh, right? Um, so the thing with SNX is that it's in straight price discovery mode. So, so you really don't know. So when something is in a discovery mode, meaning it's a newer crypto that came out within the last year or so, it's very difficult to gauge how high it's actually going to run. Now, obviously, we're looking at this nice weekly run, having a good little pullback. Will this more than likely try to budge higher? It certainly could, but we could look at something that also recently came out and see what that's been doing. And so if you look at Polkadot, you know, a, a great crypto that just, you know, is, is running up. It was down at four bucks, and here you are, a thousand percent higher. It looks like it's still trying to go go up. So, when something is in price discovery mode, you got to give it just the benefit of the doubt. If it can keep breaking all time highs, it will keep running. But if it can't get above the highs, then the run is probably over. So for SNX, I would say it looks like it's it's going to try to run higher. But you got to watch how it plays out. Uh, what was the other one? Algo was, was a newer one that came out this past year. You know, I don't really count those first few days, but here we are making these crazy wild runs. And now we're trying to get it back above $1.70. We're just having a hard time. So whether we start consolidating and then break higher, we could, or consolidate and break lower. What I would be betting on right now is anything in the top, say 15 market cap wise, according to coin market cap, these are the ones that are about to start going crazy. Once these are done going crazy, you're then gonna get the next round, which is like the top 15, 20 down to 100. That's kind of what took place back in 2017, 2018 when I did it. So like I first noticed that a lot of these higher up cryptos in the top 10 were going crazy. And then once people took a lot of those profits, I was able to like scroll down towards the bottom, find something that hasn't gone wild yet, and then fair enough, it goes crazy. So here, here we are, here's Algo, still in price discovery, maybe Algo gets a little bit more love, and it goes higher. But Polkadot is a little higher up, I believe. Polkadot's at number eight. So that being said, my little thesis, Polkadot still had, could potentially get more money behind it, Maybe people want to try to throw it up to 100 or it's already up 1,000%, which is typically what you get on a crypto return. Outside of, obviously, Doge is an, is an exception at 30,000%, but 1,000% is usually what a typical altcoin cycle looks like. But that's what I'd be looking for is um, just a lot of these bigger names, like something that's over $10 billion in terms of market cap. Money will probably start flowing into those once... Ethereum is done doing its thing. Is that list based on uh, market cap or just popularity? Uh, this list is based strictly on market cap. So market cap up here, and it's just in order of everything be up high to low. All right. <laughs> but there's actually this glitch because... XRP, they're saying circulating supply is only 35 billion when it's supposed to be 45 billion. So that's been the talk of Twitter the last 48 hours is where did 10 billion XRP disappear from? Fun little drama going on on the XRP side. Sounds interesting. All right, that's all I had, but I don't know about you, but. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I got. I don't know if anyone else had any last minute things. Not everybody should have their uh, their goals written down for the week in terms of what they want to work on. Go look I at your goals. Go look at your failures from last week. 
make sure you guys are honoring your average loss per day or per trade. Keep it simple. Keep it rule-based. Leave yourself out of it. Appreciate all the support, guys. Appreciate your time. And I shall see you in the chat sometime this week. Yep. Have a good one, guys. Let's have a good week.